working in the environment that I do, Allah is fit to judge. I am not, you know. But to the extent that I can assess Islamic culture, who am I? But the fact of the matter is, that Islamic kids don't drop out of school. They, they have a plan for their future. Now, the cliche is, um, yes, I'm going to be a doctor. You ask in this school how many kids are going to be doctors, and every hand goes up. But the fact of the matter is that half of them will. Half of them will, and they can do it, too, and they know they can do it. There's a, there's a place in Holland called Arn Town. That's a town. And there was a bridge there. Yeah. And Allied generals decided if they could take and hold that bridge, then they could foreshorten the Second World War. So they dropped paratroopers behind it, and they tried to hold it. Yes, this is an English class. It is not a history class. I just wanted to mention that one more time for clarity. When we tell him about something in our culture or faith that he isn't the same as his, he always finds a way to like relate to it. Yeah, he'll relate to it, and he'll even like, like he'll make exceptions for us. Like if we have a special holiday, he won't give us a lot of homework. Like, like he's. It's sort of a learning experience really on both sides. Like we're learning from him as a teacher, but he's also learning about us as a people. So I think that it's beneficial for the both of us. And I have heard him say that he loves being here because of that. There's the boy girl thing. I, I prefer the separation of the, of the genders. I like to have them both in the same school. I don't think it would be, I don't think I would enjoy being in a boys' school or a girls' school as much as I like being in, in the mix, having them both. But I like the idea of having them separated. Because they are separated in a Muslim school, there is an, a, a less, they're, they're, they're less able to mix. They're, they're, their meetings are very business-like. In other words, they can they can uh, come together for class projects and things like that. But uh, they're, they're because it's understood that they're separated. It's hard to describe it because it's understood that they're separated. That they don't date. There's no dating. Don't race and class during that time. Didn't they correlate? Yeah, they correlate today. Absolutely! If you think that race and class don't correlate, you, your eyes are closed. Sure, some more, some less, some here, some there, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. But don't forget, every kind of people has every kind of person. He's very respectful. He takes into consideration not only that we're females, which men and women are different, so he does treat us like ladies and not as little girls, as ladies, and he's very respectful. But he also takes into consideration that in Islam there are things that are not at times appropriate, What like in other settings, like he understands that we have to go pray and he will tell us to go pray or if we are having a hijab malfunction He'll and our scarf us, comes off. Go fix that. Go fix it. Go fix that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing that I think Mr. Booth is really respectful of, what sometimes he has to take, you know, he's a photographer of the school so sometimes in besides his English um, teaching. So, you know, whenever he has to take pictures of a girl, he'll be like, okay, one of you come in the room with us. You know, he's really respectful. He's really sensitive towards that situation. And he gets he, if a girl doesn't want to get her picture taken. Like, he understands. He's like, know? oh, it's it's a thing for modesty. You personally don't want to get your picture taken. We'll have someone who yeah, doesn't cool. mind. So he's very considerate. Yeah. He's cool. <laughs>
as for the prayer time or the religion uh, occasions or, or something that has to be very much related to religion, Mr. Booth always, uh, um, when he is given an assignment to watch the students, for example, during prayers, he is there with all the respect. Again, the other day in the workshop when we were, you know, we, when we open any uh, thing we're doing, we open it with recitation of Quran and, and prayers and this. And I actually looked at him during that time because he brought to my attention how I should actually react to the prayers when it went to the Quran when it was recited. He was bowing down, his head was down, and he was listening to the Quran even though he didn't understand the word when you know it's recited in Arabic. But he showed all respect and he follows what we do. And if we're talking, then he knows that probably we're allowed to talk. If we're not, he's very silent and he's listening just like everybody else. I have to tell you, uh, I tried to resist, but I couldn't. I just fell in love with the place. It just 